you probably have wondered, do I deserve a better life than what I have right now? And I really want to share this transformation with Haniel Dogby about how he grew up in West Africa, moved to France, and then moved to the US and show his transformation of how he was able to network using photography and videography to actually reach elite level social circles so he could actually enjoy the people that he was around and escape a negative, toxic family environment and lifestyle from his life over in West Africa. Now, this is a lot more deeper of a video than you probably intended on clicking on. So if you feel as though you resonate with challenging the status quo and you really are ready for this mind opening story, then continue watching. But if not, this isn't the video for you. So essentially, tell tell me a little bit more about your story. Like, what's your background? Um, now you do film and vi videography, obviously, for some of the most prestigious uh, people in the world. But where did you come from before that? Cool. So uh, originally, I am from West Africa, Togo. So that's where I was born and raised. So growing up where I grew up really wasn't necessarily the best environment you could possibly grow up in. And uh, that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, my mom and Dad was separated by the time I was five, and my dad came here to the States, and I was back home with my mom and my sister. And I came to the States really when I was uh, 11 years old, in between that transition, from went from Togo to France to here. Now, growing up where I grew up, I mean, it was rough. Uh, to give you like the simplest example I can possibly give you, having to literally survive because my mom had to go on the streets and literally cook food on the streets, right? Like, you know how Gary Vee talks about this cloud and dirt, right? So when I say dirt, I don't mean that mentally, like physically, literally, literally, <laughs> literally growing up in dirt. Mm -hmm. um, and also like the mental aspect of being in poverty, right? Not having the support necessary and just seeing my mom go through just like struggle just to keep us alive, just to keep us you know, house every day, keep me fat, right? Keep clothing on my back. And uh, I think growing up in, well, not even I think, growing up in an environment like that, growing up in a situation where, you know, I've just seen like the worst. I feel like what challenges in, in life in general, right? A lot of people who are given challenges in their life, ultimately we all have the same choices, right? We all have the same choices, but we may not necessarily have the same resources. What do I mean by that? You can have somebody like me, right, who grew up in the exact same environment, grew up in the uh, dirt of West Africa, uh, in poverty, you know, like extremely abusive um, relationship, like with me and my dad anyways, down on my mom's side. But like just growing up in that environment where you don't necessarily have all the resources you need, right? Even to I, survive. Not even, even to survive. survive. We're not even talking about like, uh, like we're not even talking about like, oh, you have high speed internet or you have the ability to go out to the club or you're around people. We're literally talking about like food, water, shelter, safety. Yep. And as you know, based on Maslow's hierarchy, if you don't have your basic needs, there's no way you can even get close to self actualization or even thriving. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to survive before you thrive. Um, so growing up in an environment like that, I think really for me has shed a light that allows me to see things that other people won't. Like, for example, just being able to get up every single day, and have clean water. Right. Like most people who are born here don't understand what it's like not to have clean water. Right. They don't understand what it's like to literally have to go out and find it yourself. They don't understand. Like. I was telling you the story um, where I was looking outside the, uh, uh, the penthouse out the window at 3.30 a.m. And I saw the coolest thing and the funniest thing at the same time, which is like I saw this chick like walking her her uh, uh, her puppy at 3.30 a.m. Right. And it's really funny to me seeing that and then hearing people complain about how like America is so unsafe because in most parts of Africa, like if you're walking, <laughs> if you're walking at 3.30 a.m., right, 
whether you're a dude or a woman, but even worse if you're a woman, at 3.30 a.m., you're literally, like, asking for a death wish, like, in most parts, right? Mm-hmm. And then at 4.30 a.m., at 5.30 a.m., I saw the same thing. And it made me laugh because just being able to have that freedom just to even walk outside and have lights, even something that basic, right? No, it's like when you list out, oh, I don't have time. Oh, I don't have money. Oh, now is not the right time. Oh, I don't know if I deserve this. Like those are, those are literally just a list of objections that you have to overcome. That's like a step-by-step plan of things that you have to overcome. And we're not even talking about bare necessities of like, you don't have safety, you don't have water, you don't have shelter. Then those, those objections become really trivial in like relation to that. So anybody who's saying like, Hey, uh, to be successful, I need uh, I need money, or to make connections with people, I need money, or to make uh, to be successful, I needed to be born, or I'm too old for this, I'm too young for this. Oh, I wasn't born in a big city, so I can't build a social circle. I can't live my ideal lifestyle. I can't work towards building my ideal lifestyle. The first step towards really that lifestyle is first like suspend your disbelief. Like suspend the disbelief that you can't do it because if you don't suspend your disbelief, you already disqualify yourself from becoming somebody who's successful. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is like take action. And obviously like you're a guy who like you suspended your disbelief, even though you're in the, you know, that of a situation, you're still able to take action towards your goals. Even though you had like literally toxic family members, you still set this North Star for what you wanted your life to be. And you set this action, this step by step plan to actually go out and achieve it and then actually pursue it. And honestly, like the types of connections that you have are absolutely mind blowing. It boggles my mind whenever we're talking because you'll be like, oh, yeah, I met. Uh, somebody who used to work with Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank or uh, when he met Fabio over at the Diamond Party over in Bel Air. Yeah. Some other A-list celebrities when he does photo shoots with like these insanely attractive uh, million follower models. The perspective of, oh, I don't deserve this. Like if you literally just look at just Haniel, right? If you just look at Haniel and you say like, oh, I couldn't be like all these other people. Well, like if you point to Haniel and you're like, yo, this guy came from somewhere way worse than me. This guy had to overcome way more things than me and he was still able to do it. And that's insane. So if you're sitting there, you're like, oh, I live in a small town. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Oh, I don't know how to talk to people properly. This is, this is, Daniel's literally living proof that you can have those types of connections. So what type of connections do you have now? Like now that you have this successful uh, real estate marketing company, as well as uh, your photography and videography business, what, what type of connections have you gotten? What, what are your like top accolades? Uh, that's a great question, dude. <clears throat> in terms of the best connections that I have, I mean, the beautiful thing about being in this business in the first place is that you get to meet all type of personalities and people with different backgrounds, just like you and I, right? People with backgrounds <laughs> like mine, <laughs> which is funny, right? And then other people with like the perfect background as well. Uh, but in terms of the most- it's such a spectrum. If, yeah, it really is. In terms of the, the type of people that I know, I mean, insane, man, where do I even begin? Like the top amount- promoter, Top promoters, like- <sighs> Dude, like, I can tell you right, I can tell you right now that, you know, starting off with, let's say, the 19, right? Mm -hmm. With nightclubs, the beautiful, beautiful thing about having a camera in your hand is like everyone wants you around. Mm -hmm. Every single person wants you around. Everyone wants that good old content, right? Promoters promoters want those pictures of them with like Mm -hmm. 10 girls. Yep. And then they swap out just to get for the picture of the girl. Exactly. And then all the hot girls are walking up to you asking you, hey, what's your Instagram? Uh, Can I get your Instagram? And all you do is you take a photo of them and like, you know, they're just asking you and dying for your Instagram. Whenever you go to a charity event, everyone's dressed up in nice suit and ties. And all you have to do is literally push a button. Yep. Like it's, it's, it sounds kind of trivial. I kind of trivialize it a little bit there, but at the same time, the amount of like the amount of value and the amount of skill that it takes to learn photography and the ROI you can bring to people and the value that you bring to people, it's absolutely insane. It is. So what are, what are some of the names of people of like 
types of people that you've met so far? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so one of my, one of my, I'm going to tell you guys about some of my favorite clients. I'm going to be biased here. <laughs> like one of my favorite clients is this guy. Uh, his name is Mark Demetrio, and uh, he has this book called Lessons from My Grandfather. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's uh, he's a mortgage broker. He's actually been announced as one of the top mortgage broker in America for like the past few years. And this guy has his book freaking endorsed by Barbara Corcoran of Shark Tank, <laughs> which is like, to me, it's a joke talking about this. Cause yeah. it's like, what the heck, dude? Like, that's just insane. Um, he's met Barbara Corcoran. He spoke on stage with Tony Robbins, spoke on stage with Barbara. Uh, recently, he just got on a podcast with, I think, Bradley, uh, who has, has Grant Cardone. Like all of these big names you can think of have all been on their podcast. Uh, this one of my clients that I absolutely love because that guy is just not only is he a great client of mine, but he's like someone who I can also look at as a mentor, which is really beautiful. Right. Because it's like you can get in this business and you can you can you can have people as clients that are. 100 times more successful than you. Mm -hmm. And because because I'm able to have access to how they think but just because I'm providing them a level of service and they love how I'm providing the service, it also adds more value in my life. In a weird way, it's like they're paying me money to make my life better. <laughs> I mean, I mean you're, not, you're not wrong. Like, they invite you to a charity event. They yeah. invite you to a private party that you couldn't literally, you literally couldn't have paid money to be yeah, in some of exactly. these events. Like, yeah. for example, uh, when you're at the Diamond Party, you literally couldn't have paid money to get into that event. Zero dollars, if man. Only invites, it's like most of the people there just have cameras. Um, actually, half the guys that were there only had cameras. And then there's like 20 guys who don't have cameras. It's mm -hmm. like Machine Gun Kelly, uh, Michael Fabio, Sartain, yeah. Fabio. Sam Rima, um, the guys who really <laughs> are, are literal A-list celebrities, uh, so casting director of Playboy. And so for Haniel, it's like he's just able to get access to things that you literally couldn't pay money for. It doesn't matter if you make $10 million a year if you don't have access to the people, the gatekeepers who actually keep you out of these parties. And I mean, that's something that gave me a lot of FOMO when I was first learning about Social Circle. And what I was first actively discovering about social circles, the things that I didn't know, I didn't know. Right. And for you, you actually get to step behind the scenes, mm -hmm. not only of like the front, you see the front line of a business, like just knowing that somebody exists, but you actually get an insight to the back end of what somebody's business looks like yes. by be being able to provide the media content. So when you end up getting... Did that for the camera. Yeah. So when you end up getting that type of access behind the scenes like that, it ends up like rewiring your mindset. Like how, how confident do you feel now when you're behind the scenes for one of the top real estate investors? Mm -hmm. Now you actually become higher status just like that real estate investor just because he invited you to a party to take pictures. Yeah. So I would really say, you know, getting into getting into the content creation business slash photography, videography, it really helped set me in a direction where I knew exactly what I needed to do because no matter what profession you pick, right, there's already somebody who's done it before, right? But being able to just kind of just have an outlet where I can create, right, I can communicate with others, I can help make other people happy, I think it really, it really bought this feeling of self-fulfillment for me. Because I, I, again, I, I was coming out of an environment where like I was being told on a daily basis, you can't do it, like you're not good enough. Right, you're not good enough on a daily basis. Like even to this day, like I've never heard like I'm proud of you from my dad, for example, right? So in a weird way, like I'm not telling you to go out there seeking validation because that's the absolute worst thing you could do to yourself as a human being. But being able to get myself in an environment where I could see the things that are possible. So one of the guys that I worked with, he's built a real estate business that is worth billions of dollars. And you know about, you know who I'm talking about, right? So just being around that guy in itself, someone who's built a billion dollar business in real estate, being around that person and hearing from them that, hey, Neil, I think you're one of the most intelligent people I've met. You're one of the hardest working kids I've had the opportunity to work with. And I know you're only going to become more successful in the future. Dude, that does so much for someone like me who's never had that like that ideal figure, figure, figure to kind of like look at, right? So outside of really like making money, 
I think more than anything, it's the impact of what those other people who are really successful, who 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 are like in a weird way kind of aligned with my North Star, right? Which is like, hey, I want to be a person who has who wants to have a lot of impact on other people's lives, right? Whether it's through it's through doing business with them, whether it's through helping them in any way whatsoever, right? I just think if you're on this earth, you gotta have a mission to make somebody else's life better, or you shouldn't be here in the first place. And getting into and creating my own business, doing the videography, photography, just having that exposure to these bigger personalities, these very strong characters, dude, man, like it, it just completely, I, like I already had the mindset of a winner, but when you're around someone who's doing a hundred times, thousand times better than you, it challenges you to become a better person. You're forced to grow, right? It's like if you put a sheep in the middle of like three lions, right? If the lions don't eat that sheep, chances are it's gonna become a badass fucking sheep, mm -hmm. right? Because it's around a bunch of lions who are aggressive, who go after what they want. They don't feel sorry for like fucking anything that's happening to them. They don't pity themselves. They just go after and they keep on crushing it no matter what. So another reason why I think a lot of these guys definitely need to go after that thing that they want is because it's gonna give them exposure to things they never knew even existed. I mean, seriously, think about, think about how, many, how many things you're missing out on and think about how selfish it is for you not to do the thing you want because doing the thing you want is not only going to lead you to your own happiness, but you're also going to have positive impact on somebody else's life. So it's like, it's like what service are you doing in the world by not being the best version, best version of you? Right. It's like, what service would I have been doing to myself if I was just sulking in my situation rather than going out there and trying to get something out of it? Right. Like trying to create something from nothing. And if I had never taken the step to do that, I wouldn't feel fulfilled as a human being. And not only that, but it's like. I don't know, man, I, I just don't know what else I would look up to. Like, you know, I lost my mom and sister in 2016, my mom and seven year old little sister. Right. It's like. If I didn't have a passion, it's like, what the else? Like, like what else, what else am I supposed to hold on to, right? So it's more than photography, it's more than access, it's more than getting these like great network, like people, like great powerful people in my, in my sphere of influence, right? Being able to like, right now I can call Dennis, who's a luxury broker in Miami and be like, hey man, I'm coming to Miami. Can you hook me up with like a really cool place to stay and not necessarily charge me out at the ass? Yeah, of course I got you. You know, we go to New York, we can get into any single club. We go to LA, Vegas, right? Like things like that. It's super cool to be able to do that, but like stop thinking about it as just about you. Cause when I go to Vegas or when I go to New York or whatever, these places and I go with friends, it allows me to also give them that access. Like I want them to have that just like you do for me, like, like we do for each other, right? I wanna be able to provide that to my friends because what if they don't have that skill set to do that? Like there are some people, like it's very rare, but there are some people who just don't have the ability to do some things, right? And if I can be the person to do that for them and to bring that smile in their face to you, like there's no amount of money that can ever do that. There's zero amount of money and you won't know that until you've made that money. Like until you've made a certain amount of money, you're not going to truly understand how frickle of a thing it actually is. Like the best ROI you could possibly have in this life are good relationships. And you build good relationship by being who you are, by doing the thing you love and connecting with other people that way. It's not really what social circle helps you accomplish. It's what social circle helps you avoid. Social circle really helps you avoid that status quo environment of if you had just followed down that status quo, you know, I, I don't, I don't even know what, what would have ended up like you came from such a poor environment that I can't imagine that you would have been able to achieve nearly the things that you're able to now and be able to have that freedom to actually pick the type of people that you want to be around instead of settling for these toxic relationships for the rest of your life. You would have ended up around the same toxic people that weren't going anywhere with their life 
and a, a good way to put that is you're going nowhere fast. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, instead of doing that cookie cutter lifestyle, you really boiled it down of like, okay, who are the type of people that I would actually enjoy being around? What people do I need to get rid of out of my life? And how do I actually go and accomplish that? And the way that you're able to do that is just happened to be social circle because that you had such a deep rooted why and you understood so passionately exactly what you wanted. It became a lot clearer, like the, the step-by-step -step process or the semantics of the step-by-step -step process didn't really matter. It didn't matter if it was photography. It didn't matter if it was the marketing. It didn't matter if it was some other path. Mm -hmm. You were going to achieve that higher level because you wanted to avoid all of that hate and destruction that you'd experienced in the past. And I honestly think that's why you've had some of the best success is because you really were true to your inner self and really had that like self-authoring of like, what do I actually want out of these situations? Mm -hmm. With that in mind, Photography was just a way for you to connect with people. It wasn't the thing. It wasn't the solution. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't photography, it probably would have been something else. But at the same time, photography was such an easy thing for you to go out, learn, dedicate your craft to, mm -hmm. and be able to provide people really easy ROI really, really quickly. And like for a guy who's sitting right behind the camera, what does he need to feel if he just knows that he needs to take action, but he's not doing it? What does he need to feel? Yeah, what does he need to feel? Uh, well, first and foremost, you're gonna die. So that should motivate the hell out of you because I think a lot of us, uh, unfortunately, we, we have this false- talk, talk a little bit deeper on that too because <clears throat> I know that that was, like, that was like part of your reality growing up is like people around you literally dying. Oh yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Like the context of that doesn't really set in for a lot of mm -hmm. people. So what you, what's the context for that? Sure, I'll explain. Uh, <laughs> I'll explain. I'll go into some crazy stories. Have you ever been inside of your house and you got tear gas bomb at eight years old? Have you ever had your neighbors <laughs> killed when you were eight years old because of a civil uprising? At eight years old, seeing blood all over your neighbor's house while you're crying tears from tear gas. And I know I'm smiling as I'm saying this, but let me get serious, which is that like, I've seen some horrid things happen. I've lost people really close to me. Um, I also remember losing my uncle when I was like, dude, I think I was like seven years old. Um, he was an alcoholic, he passed away. Um, I remember losing one of my best friends in elementary school. So it's like the whole idea of like, that is like, I'm not just saying it just to say it. I'm not just saying it because it's fun to say it because everyone talks about it, but because I've actually lived this life and I, I know exactly what that's like to have the thing that's most precious to you ripped away. Like for me, for example, in 2016, having my mom and little sister pass away, was worst, worst scenario I could possibly even think of. I mean, it's like one day they're there and then suddenly just gone. And I think that really sets in the reality of life, which is that tomorrow's not promised, now there's the next 30 seconds, right? So ultimately, if you're gonna do something, you need to just do it and stop worrying about all of the, these bullshit semantics in between that don't really matter, like worrying about what other people think about you. The majority of us don't take action because, not because we don't think we can do it, Right, this is saying that I love and it goes, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Is there a light, not a darkness that which frightens us? And I think that's really deep because oftentimes we're, we're sitting around and acting like things are supposed to be handed on this silver platter. You know, and um, it's just not. And when you when you lose when you lose someone that's that important to you in your life, and you start reflecting on it, you reflect on the things you wish you could have done for them. You reflect on everything that you didn't do in your power. You know, reality really starts to set in because you know when that happened and they pass away. The first thing I started thinking was, could I have provided them a better lifestyle? A little earlier on right and it's not regret like it's not regret at all but I'm trying to give you a reason as to why you need to take action right now because the last thing you want 
is to be in a place where you've had this great idea that you've wanted to act on forever and then you never do anything about it. I know that you have somebody that you really care about and I just want you to sit there and I want you to do some negative visualization here, not positive. Everyone tells you to be motivated by things you find positive. I want you to do some negative visualization here. Yeah. What, what would your life look like six months from now if you didn't have, if you didn't cut out those toxic people out of those, out of your life? What would your life look like a year from now if you ended up not cutting those same people out and not actually accomplishing the goals that you have set out for yourself? What does it look like if you still maintain your friendships with people that drag you down, people that don't support you, people that hold you back in either your health, your wealth, relationships? What does that look like? Honestly, it's a pretty dark path when you think about it like that. That's why if you don't actually get this solved now, this is going to be something that ends up haunting you. And I know that's, that's how I felt. I felt like if I didn't actually learn how to connect with people on a deeper level, if I didn't learn how to get into the, the types of groups that I wanted to be around and finally leave my high school friends behind, people that didn't have higher aspirations for life, I wanted to be able to create this like inner circle of like, really, really high status guys that were all working towards their goals. Not just people that, you know, talked about working towards their goals on Instagram, but who are guys that have a deep rooted character of almost spiritual type character to them and actually go out and achieve their goals. And that's honestly why I think you've been so successful is because you have that like almost spiritual level of, of character. But to develop that spiritual level of character, you really just have to be intact with what you actually want and be really honest with yourself. And I'm not always honest with myself. I'm not going to lie. For me, one of the things that always tripped me up the most was doing school for validation rather than for myself mm. and put me on a, a really wrong path of like following just what the friends that my parents wanted me to have, the friends that society told me to have, the pathway that society told me to have, instead of actually going out picking that North star and then working backwards from that of like, okay, I don't know exactly what I want, but I know that I need to learn some type of skill that's applicable to helping people and just learning the skill of like how to offer value. Like that core skill is something that you'll end up never feeling lonely because wherever you are, it's not money. It's not status. It's not looks. It's literally just a personality and a step-by-step -step process of how do you find out what somebody wants and then how do you actually just reflectively offer them value? And that's reason why you've been so successful with your photography because you really dig down into the core needs of what somebody needs. So what, what are some examples of, of things that you've been able to get access to because of your photography? I have, uh, I have connections and uh, now my company is able to offer New York Times Square Digital freaking billboard just through connections. <laughs>
that's something that it's like an unstoppable force, like you just said. Are there any other things that you'd say for the guy behind the camera thinking about photography, considering that as an option for actually being able to build his social circle? Yeah, for sure. Uh, the beautiful thing is with photography is that you get to do the one thing everybody loves, which is everyone loves talking about themselves, right? Everyone loves things that are about themselves. Sure. So once you have a camera in front of you, the camera's not pointed towards you, it's pointed towards them, right? So get a camera, <laughs> find some people that want to have their cameras pointed, your camera pointed at them, take photos of them, send it to them. Uh, just offer them things, man. Like you don't, you don't necessarily have to even start off by making thousands of dollars you can just start off by doing something as simple as connecting with someone in your city that has the access that you want mm -hmm. that's simple and if you think that that's something that would be possible for you if you take a look down in the bio down below there's a link there i want you to click that link and on that link it has a time to book a call with either me or one of my coaches and break you through a free 60 day action plan to actually map out how to build your own social circle. And, you know, honestly, like, Haniel being one of the best case studies for these exact same skill sets and this exact same type of plan, the spot that it was able to pull Haniel out of in terms of the toxic people that he was around, the, this these core skill sets, they're not something that was just applicable for a 60 day period, but this was something that's applicable throughout his entire life and that he'll be able to even continue building upon that in the future. So if you've considered that and you recognize, hey, every second I'm working either towards my goals or away from my goals, this is just a tiny opportunity right now. And the crazy thing is like you're 90% of the way there already just by watching this video to the end. If you just take a look, click that link you're almost there. So you can either continue being a dabbler, keep going through YouTube, or you can just take this opportunity to actually like get this part of your life handled and hopefully solve this once and for all. Do it.